Welcome to um, in this video. Our goal today with this video is to introduce Thinkercad, um, which is a piece of software done by Autodesk. And the goal is to provide a easy to use way of doing uh, sort of experiments online. Uh, this uh, particular product, Tinkercad, has many different functionality. And the one we're going to focus on today in this video is electrical uh, side of it. And our goal is to introduce the basic instruments that are available on this tool, as well as how to build simple electrical circuits using this tool. So let's go ahead and start at the beginning and talk about where can you find Tinkercad. As the name implies, you just go to tinkercad.com and you will get to that site. If you have not already registered, when you get to this point, you're gonna have uh, a sign in button and uh, you click on it, or you can either use your uh, email and username to get into it, or um, you can uh, use your Google, uh, sign in with Google. So I'm gonna use this one. And since I've already signed in, all my information is available in there and it's gonna sign me in. If you don't have it, you have to go through and create your account and all that. These are all free. And uh, st CAT stands for Computer Aided Design. As you can see, I've been playing around with this thing and I've got some mechanical design. That's another feature it has. It allows you to do three-dimensional, you know, 3D design for printing it. But today we're gonna focus on the circuit side of this. So once you have created an account, you simply click, click on Create New and it will create a, a new file for you. So since I've already done this, I'm gonna click on this one. This is a pre-existing, uh, uh, I haven't really done anything with it, but I've created it a while ago. So once you save your document, the next time you come back, it's there, and you can just simply say tinker this, which means it opens up the screen and you can start working with it. So, so far what we've talked about is basically what, how do you get to Tinkercad and the fact that you need to uh, create an account before you can log in and you simply can use your email and whatever password. Uh, it is a two-factor verification, so it's gonna require you to send you either an email or send you something in the phone, uh, on your phone to validate that you do who, do who you are saying you are, you actually are. Other than that, it's a very simple process to create an account and best of all, it's free. And it's pretty, the performance is really good as well. So the next thing I wanted to do is talk about kind of what would you see here? So when you get here, you will have, of course, some basic tools about uh, uh, rotating things. If you have some component here and you are rotated, this button allows you to do that. Uh, if you want to delete something, you can either press the delete button or you can press this garbage can looking thing. And then you can annotate, you can put some information or you can hide stuff. And then over here, um, this device, uh, we won't get to it in this video, but this device allows you to embed an Arduino in a microprocessor board if you, if you want to use an Arduino to do something. Then you can write the code, build the circuitry here, and then when you finish, you can download that to a physical Arduino and use it. But that's not our goal today. Our goal today is to learn about what components, generally what components are available, focusing on the resistor only, and also learn about how, how do we get to use the power supply and the multimeter and the proto boards, or the breadboard. They call it breadboard, I'm calling it proto board. So those are interchangeable things. So if you look at it, so, so far we talked about kind of the menu items and there's a simulation, we're definitely gonna get to use that. So once you build your circuit, you can actually see it run to see if it does what you want it to do, which is a really nice feature. You can share it, you can export it and all that. So let's, uh, let's go, I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do select on the components instead of just the basic one, I'm gonna select all the components that are available. So I'm gonna look at everything that they have. And as you can look up here, they've got basic electrical components, uh, diodes and um, 
with caps, different kinds of capacitors and inductors and resistors, all, all our focus today is going to be on the resistors. Uh, and then there are other nice sensors, for example, they have photoresistors, photodiodes, they have ultrasound distance measurement, IRs. So you can simulate a lot of different things, keyboards if you want to do that, if you want to use switches, the switches are available, all that is very nice and uh, easy to use. And then they got the LEDs here, um, all kinds of LEDs and light bulbs and all that as you want to use them. Um, and then uh, fine, and then uh, some display board display. This is called a seven segment display LCDs, and then some different kinds of breadboards. We're going to use this particular breadboard here. So, um, so I, while we're here, I'm just going to select. By the way, if you like something and you want to put it on your board, all you do you click on it and then click over here and brings it in. And while we're talking about every time you put a component on your uh, working the desktop, which is right here, it also gives you a product, it gives you a kind of the property, this is called the properties table, I believe. And so it kind of tells you what it is. It says this is a small breadboard, you can have a larger one if you want, but we're going to have the small breadboard, it's simple, that's plainly for what we're going to be doing here. Um, and it tells you, uh, the only property it gives you for this one is a name, so I'll just basically say protoboard one. Maybe I have a second one. So, so that's pretty much it as far as the proto board is concerned. Then, uh, as you guys, I was mentioning, there are Arduinos you can pull in and use, but we're going to skip those. We want to focus on this. Mul this is the multimeter the component. As soon as I clicked on it, you know this one came out, so I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm going to click on this one too. This is the power supply. So as soon as I click on that, I will get power supply to come in here. So. So now let's go ahead and go back and talk about these. Oh, well, let's, let's put one more component in here too. So let me go back up here and get the basic. Let's go ahead and put a resistor in here as well. Okay, now, now let's go ahead and explore each of these individually. Let's start with the power supply. So, so the power supply is basically a glorified battery, okay? Uh, so what you could do is basically you give it a name. I can say this is a source. You can call it whatever, but I'll call it a source. So a lot of time for electrical stuff, we say this is a voltage source. So they use an acronym, they use abbreviation like VS to tell you kind of what it is they're looking at. And then what voltage do you want to set it at? I'll say, okay, five volts sounds like a good thing. And this basically is telling you what's the maximum current you want to put out of here and five, five amp is more than enough for what you got to do right now. So that's a power supply. Its job is to produce different voltages for you. And, and then this is a, this is a uh, multimeter. So if you, if you think about it, this actually, is three instruments in one. I can run it as an ammeter, I can run it as a voltmeter, and I can run it as a resistor. Notice as soon as I clicked on it, what happened? I got a property sheet coming up here, and it says, okay, you got a multimeter, what do you wanna call it? Let's say we're gonna call it a meter, for whatever reason. And then, um, and then it says, okay, do you wanna use it as an ammeter? Do you wanna measure current? Do you want to use it as a voltmeter, measure voltages, or do you want to use it as a, as a uh, ohmmeter, measure resistance? So those are the choices you have. This is the property sheet here. So I think some of it I can show you pretty quickly. For example, let's say I remember we set this one to five volts. So if I want to measure to see what this is, all I have to do, I just go to one. So you notice when I go over a terminal, it highlights it then also tell me so I'm just going to basically hold the left button on my mouse down and bring it to this one and click on it there is now I have wire from here to here and then I'm going to put a wire from here to here and I notice I, I maybe I shouldn't have done that but I did it backwards which means now if I set this one to a voltmeter let me change that one to a voltmeter notice how this thing changed to the volt so if I use it as a voltmeter, 
I set this one to be five volt, but that would be plus from here to minus here, but I connected it backward to this one. So I'm expecting to read minus uh, five on that screen. So how do I make this thing do something? And that's where the simulate, start simulator comes, but comes in. This, this basically starts and stops the simulator, which basically says, okay, I, I have a circuit here, go ahead and try it, see what happens. So if I run this thing, and you notice, this one has got five volts, and since I connected it backward here, I'm getting a minus five volts. Let's go back and correct this. So what I need to do is basically get this out of here. Oops, can't do that, okay. We're gonna take the black side from the power, oops, I don't wanna do that either, so let's clean this up. Get rid of this wire as well. We're gonna take the red one, connect it to the red one, and we're gonna take the black one, connect it to the black one. And now if I run my simulator to see what's going on, I get five, life is good. Okay, so hopefully now you know how a voltmeter works. Now M, so voltmeter is uh, like infinite resistance. So I can connect it direct across the power supply, nothing bad will happen. But if I stop this and I wanna use this thing as an ammeter, then I put it on amp, but Amp, you, I can't put it directly across the power supply because that would cause the power supply to short and then uh, bad things will happen. You cannot short, put a zero ohm across or a piece of wire across the plus and minus of the voltage because that will make the power supply try to produce infinite, infinite uh, current which causes it to give you error. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wire, oops, let's go ahead and get rid of this wire. Escape will uh, basically stop you from drawing wires. If, you, if you're if you drawing wires and you don't want to stop it, just press the escape key. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this resistor and uh, we're going to bring it down here. And I'm going to take a piece of wire, and by the way, Typically in electrical circuits, we want these lines to be either horizontal or vertical, although it's not the end of the world if it's not, but they would look, they would frown on you doing that. Okay, so, so instead of, instead, so if I wanna find out how the ammeter is, then I have to take this wire that goes through here and direct the current from oops, uh, here to the ammeter plus side, and then, so I wanna force all the current to go through the ammeter. And when you're using ammeter, the resistance of ammeter is equal to zero. So it's like just a wire inside, okay? And then I'm gonna take this, gonna go, oops, over here, back down. And notice I'm trying to, trying to do either a vertical or horizontal or um, 45 degree, 45 degree kind of, they almost allow you to do that. Uh, the reason for doing this is a lot easier to follow. If you just randomly draw a wire, we call that a rat's nest because you got wires going everywhere. It's really hard to follow. Okay, so now I have a circuit and remember I've got, so you remember from our history, the brown is one, black is zero, so that's 10 times red is two, which means it's 10 times 10 to the power of two, so this is 1,000 ohm. So if I run this thing, the current through here should be five volts divided by 1,000, which is five milliamps. So let's try this and see if we get that. So we're gonna start the simulation again, and sure enough, notice there's five milliamps and that. Now, one of the things, let's say, let's say I wanna do multiple things at the same time with this one. I wanna measure the current, I wanna measure the voltage, I wanna measure the resistance and all kinds of goodies like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over here, and grab another one of this, and then I'm gonna come over here and grab another one too. And actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is I want this one to measure, let's say, so, so let's go back and rename this. So we, this one is gonna measure amp, so we're gonna call it um, amp meter, so we remember what but by as well. This one is gonna measure the voltage, so we're gonna have selected to do voltage, and we're gonna call it voltmeter, okay? So now, if I do the same thing, click here with the right button, go, let's see where is the positive. The positive is over here. 
So there it is, and my negative is over here. And since we've got five volts, we should be able to see five volts in a voltmeter. Now maybe at the same time, and this is not, this we're gonna do this, but we're gonna come back and talk about if that is really the right thing to do. But I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna have this one do the third function it can do, which is resistance, okay? So this is called an ohm, you know, it's gonna ohm meter or whatever, it's gonna measure the resistance. So we'll just call it resistance. And notice that the R is selected here. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm, again, what I'm gonna do is take a piece of wire and put it over here. You can do that with the, oops, oops. And notice if you don't go to these connections, it will, uh, it will not make the connection, it just keeps, doing, oops. So let me go ahead and do it one more time. Up here. You gotta get that red button, red. Uh, cup red um, circle, uh, the square to come up, otherwise it's really done making a connection. Okay, we will violate the rules and I go diagonally up, that's okay. Now, I should be, if I turn this on, I should see the value of the resistance here. I should see the voltage here. Notice the voltage is across this, but notice the ammeter is broken into the circuit so I can measure the current going through it. So I should see five milliamp up here, should see five volt there, and if everything works, and this is what something we gotta careful, everything works here, I should see one kilo. So let's see what happens. Oops. So, so now what, does, so everything looks pretty good, pretty good. We've got, um, oh, oh yeah, we got, we got all kinds of problems here. So we've got a wrong value here. Oh, this is at uh, nine. So we must have a problem here. Uh, and the problem has to do with this ohmmeter here. You cannot measure resistance in a circuit because when you measure the resistance in a circuit, you're actually putting this ohmmeter across all of these and it's changing the value. So we are drawing more current than this is capable of giving us. So instead of giving us five volts, it's trying to give us five. It's giving the maximum we can, and since we said the maximum of five milliamps. So the moral of the story is that you cannot measure resistance inside the circuit. You have to break the circuit. You have to take your resistor out before you can use it as an ohmmeter. So let me fix that. Let's stop this thing, get rid of this thing. So I'm basically taking my ohmmeter out of the circuit because that, because it's not infinite resistance, it's gonna cause problems. And also because this resistance is gonna be in parallel with all of that. So all of those things together will cause a problem. So let's go ahead and start the simulation again. And now everything looks good. So we've got the five milliamp because we've got five volt through going one K, five volt divided by a thousand is 0 0.005 amp, which is five milliamp. Milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. It's five volts, everything looks good. Now notice that when we are measuring infinite resistance, this thing says is mega ohm, so that must be, whenever you see mega ohm with no number on it, it means you have an open, you don't have anything across it. Now, let's go ahead and remove some of these to see if we can measure. So we're gonna take our resistor out of the circuit and try to measure it. So what we're gonna do is, this is my, um, and meter, and might as well kind of play with this a little bit. Oh, let the, um, so we can also rotate this. Sometimes it's easier if you rotate it, the components are easier to get to with your wiring. So we're gonna take this, put it over here, take this, and put another wire here. Now we're gonna start the simulation, and sure enough, it tells us it's one kilo ohm, you know this? And of course, this is the circuit is broken. You have zero ohm in here. Since this is floating, there's zero volts there. And, but this one is still supplying five volts, but since nobody's, since it's open and no current can flow through it, you got a zero amp coming through that. Okay. 
The last component we want to cover in this is this proto board. Now, when you use when you're using Tinkercad, you don't need the proto board. But when you're actually trying to build this thing in the physical world, you will need this because the nice thing about this is if you want to connect ends of two components together, this proto board allows you to do that. They, these are connected in a certain way, and I would like you to experiment to see which one of these are connected with what. But you get the hint is here. Notice as I go over it, the hint is the, the diagram it shows, but I don't want to give it too much away. So what we're going to do is basically if you want to know what is connected to what, you put one wire in this hole and you put another wire in this hole and you run the simulation. So start the simulation at zero ohm, which means these holes are connected to each other. So now I say, well, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and see if I were to take, let me stop the simulation, you have to stop the simulation before. So if I take this and go to the next hole, are they connected to each other? So if I start the simulation, say, oh, nope. Remember, mega ohm with no number means it's open. There's no connection, there's the resistance is infinite. So experiment with that and see if you can convince yourself which hole is connected to which hole. So, so, so far we could talk about that. So um, typically when we, when we build this thing, for example, uh, I'm not sure what I did with my resistor. So let me, so typically if uh, when you are doing chips, uh, which are the, these we put them on the board like this, this way if I want to make a connection to this leg, to this leg and I can, basically take a piece of wire and go here. Now these two are connected to each other. Or if I wanna have another wire connected there, it is connected to it too. So that's kind of how they use this thing. So to make it easier to make connection and break connection. So for example, if I've got a resistor, I'll put my resistor here and I can make connection to the resistor leg on any of these holes. Makes it a little nicer to do it this way instead of the way I was doing it. For example, if I wanted to, this, this, uh, if I, oops, let me go ahead and get rid of all this. I got, see how I got messy really quickly. So let me go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and draw a wire from here to this hole and another one from here to this hole. And it's kind of makes it nicer just to be able to have its own point of connections instead of lumping them all on top of each other like I was doing. And also the board allows you to organize things in a more orderly fashion. So if I do a simulation, once again, you see is 1K here, okay? And um, typically, um, uh, let's just stop right here. So what we've done, and this was an introductory video just showing you how you can use power supplies how you could connect things together using the wires and uh, how you can use voltmeter either as a uh, multimeter as measuring amps, remembering that amps, you have to break the circuit and put the ammeters in the way like I did that earlier. And you can measure, you can also use the multimeter as a voltage voltmeter. You can use it as a ohmmeter and measure resistance. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, make sure when you're looking at this video, there might be some comments about corrections or clarification. So yeah, read the description of this video uh, <clears throat> before, after or before you watch it. If there's nothing there, then that means everything is okay. Thanks and look forward to the next video.